Welcome to our introduction to Youth Health Transition. In this presentation, we'll be talking about the process of getting ready for health care as an adult. This session was created and brought to you by the Youth Health Transition Initiative at the Wasteman Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Before we dive into the content of today's presentation, I want to offer a context of who is providing this training. The Wisconsin Department of Health Services through the Division of Public Health administers programs that serve families who have children and youth with special health care needs. As you can see, we represent a wide variety of programs and services throughout the state of Wisconsin. The Youth Health Transition Initiative, located towards the bottom of the circle, is one of the programs within this network. As we move around the circle in a clockwise manner, ABC for Health helps families with insurance and benefits questions. Our Wisconsin Medical Home Initiative serves as expertise on the concept of a medical home and how we can help families ensure they are getting the best coordinated medical care they can access. Parent to Parent of Wisconsin is a peer parent matching program where they match a trained support parent with a parent in need of some support. Family Voices of Wisconsin provides advocacy and training for families. The map represents our regional centers, which we'll share more about shortly. And finally, the Well Badger Resource Center is a first stop for support for families seeking general information and resources. There are five regional centers that are part of the Children and Youth with Special Health Care Needs Network. These regional centers are staffed by professionals who often are parents themselves and have lots of resources and support for families raising children with special health care needs. You can contact them for support to answer a question or when you're not sure where to turn in your parenting journey. Take a moment now and jot down the phone number for your regional center. Professionals are also encouraged to contact our regional centers with their questions. Bottom line, the regional centers are here for you. Now let's dive into the content of this presentation. Healthcare transition is the change from a pediatric model of care where parents and caregivers make most of the medical decisions to an adult model of care where most adults make their own decisions. This is the main focus of our discussion today. During this video, you will learn the definition of youth healthcare transition, be able to identify three steps in that process and access a transition readiness assessment, which can be completed by a parent or by a youth themselves. Let's start off with a short video from the Children's Hospital of San Antonio which will highlight some of the reasons why talking about healthcare transition is important. At the end of this video, they will reference resources available in Texas, but rest assured, we have you covered here in Wisconsin. Look familiar? Have you noticed maybe your child has outgrown the pediatrician? Is the age gap between your teen and the other patients in the waiting room significantly different? How about those special moments during the weigh-in? Remember them? Perhaps not as special now. It's time to prepare your older child for the transition to an adult provider. Hey, Brian. Uh, how are you doing? Good. Hi. How are you? Good, Good to see thanks. you again. Good to see you too. So how are things? Things are... He's doing very well. He's actually getting good grades at school, and he's looking at several different colleges around here. Oh, that's great news. What colleges are you interested in? I was thinking of going... He's actually thinking about staying home with us this year and looking at the community colleges around here. And the good thing is, we can still keep coming to you since you've known him since he was a baby. Well, Mom... This is uncomfortable. I, I wanted to ask the doctor some questions in private about myself. Do you mind? Your child is growing up and moving toward adulthood. And sometimes it's not easy for them to talk about serious topics that could be personal. This is a family decision and transitioning to adult health care can and should be easy. Start by being on the same page. Let your teen lead the discussion and help guide them on health care. Remember, your physician is here to help both of you navigate the transition. Here you go, Brian. This is our transition checklist. It's obvious my Brian is growing up. 
I guess we need to schedule an appointment. Actually, I guess you need to schedule an appointment. And there's several things on the checklist. We can talk about this when we get home. Is that okay with you? Sounds good to me. I'll give them okay. a call when we get home. Okay. And the transition checklist is really just a way for us to review several different aspects of transitioning to adult care. And we can talk about it at your next appointment. Great. I guess next time I will listen and you guys will talk. Sounds like a plan, Mom. So how can you help your teen with that transition? How do you know when your teen is ready to move to an adult provider? What are the steps to transition to adult care? Begin the discussion with your child when they're between the ages of 12 and 14 to help prepare for independence. Be sure to include both your teen and your provider in the discussion. Come prepared with questions on how to manage medical needs, appointments, medication, records, and insurance. To schedule a transition appointment, call your pediatrician. And to download the Children's Hospital of San Antonio Transition Checklist, visit the link below. So who needs to think about youth health transition? The information we are going to discuss applies to children who will turn 18 years of age. From typically developing youth to those with special health care needs or disabilities, all children who turn age 18 will be faced with the legal changes in their health care. It is critical that children with complex health care needs have a transition plan in place. We know that good quality health care is of absolute importance to them and their family. And with the proper preparation, this transfer of care will not have a negative impact on their health. Some families may not find all of the information in this presentation to be relevant for their child. Perhaps the ages of the different activities will be different, or perhaps as a parent, you worry that your child will have a different path and that a supportive adult will always need to be in the room with your child during an appointment. This introduction is an attempt to cover all aspects of health transition. We have additional training opportunities, which will go more in depth to show how the family's path may be different due to the complexity of their child's healthcare need. One thing that can be predicted about children is that they get older. Regardless of other factors, gender, race, health condition or not, children age, once they are 18 and are legally considered adults, they will transfer from pediatric providers to adult providers. They will need to be as independent as possible to be able to attend to their own health care needs or have the supports necessary in place to meet those needs. This is a good place to acknowledge that in this presentation, I will be referring to parent and children but know that in many families, there are grandparents, other relatives, or friends helping raise children. We want to be inclusive, but need a language we can use for the duration of this presentation and have selected the terms parent and children. We like to encourage families to stay a step ahead. Health transition activities can start as early as age 12 and progress up until that youth becomes an adult. We know different children will have different levels of ability to engage in the different steps, but with support from parents, school programs, and health providers, all children can participate to their own ability throughout this process. Everyone's journey is unique. It is important to start the process of getting ready for transition at a younger age. Between the ages of 12 and 14, children may begin to understand who their doctors are and why they see them. They may start spending time alone with their physician as appropriately aligned with their development. And some children may start filling out a transition readiness assessment to see how much they understand about healthcare. We will talk more about this assessment later in this overview. The second step is to be in the know. To the degree youth can participate in this step, they should. But we realize for many youth, they will need assistance from their parents at this stage. This is the time that the medical team needs to know what the youth's unique medical needs are, how the youth communicates, and all the details about their disability and diagnoses. Often families will be the ones to initiate this conversation with healthcare providers. This is the time to be getting those records in order prior to transferring to adult healthcare providers. For youth who will be able to make their own medical decisions, it is important that they start thinking about privacy and consent issues. For those who will be needing assistance, this is the time to think about who will be helping them with their medical decisions as an adult. And finally, the third step is making the transition to adult healthcare system. This is a short list of the basics 
And as you explore this process further in our other trainings, you will discover many details that will need to be considered at this stage in life. Of course, as children reach the age of 18 to 21, they experience many transitions. They may graduate from high school and either continue their schooling or enter the workforce. Others will be involved in day programming after they finish school. Some will move to a home other than their parents. And for any of those transitions to be successful, young adults need to have a successful transition in their health care. Good health is the foundation for a rich and meaningful life. Got Transition, our national partners, have designed a transition readiness assessment for both youth and parents. Our own Wisconsin Youth Health Transition Initiative is working on creating a readiness assessment for youth with intellectual or developmental disabilities, referenced here as IDD. The links for these assessments are available in the description of this session below, and there are also links on our Wisconsin Health Transition website. We encourage you to download an assessment and think through how you might complete it. This will help introduce you to more of the topics that will be discussed in further training opportunities. As we begin to wrap up, we want to share this video from NEMERS called Becoming an Adult, Taking Responsibility for Your Medical Care to serve as a summary of healthcare transition. Every pediatric patient will eventually need to transition to an adult provider. The age of transition varies between different facilities. Some pediatric facilities will allow you to stay in their hospital or in their office for an undetermined length of time. But it's really important to start to identify that you need to transition to an adult provider so that you are in a more age appropriate setting. Every family can start to encourage their child to be more independent in their care. So they can make sure that the child will tell mom or dad when they're having symptoms, when they don't feel well. We can make sure that they register themselves when they go to visits. But then we want to make sure that families start to encourage them to be autonomous in other aspects in care. So for patients with more complex medical conditions who are on chronic medicines or on medicines that they take every day, families can start to encourage their child to be more autonomous in accessing those things. So that means having them call pharmacies and getting their own refills. And you can do it as young as the patient is developmentally appropriate. Okay. Bye. In order to get ready for the transition to adult center care, patients can start in their pediatric offices, practicing the skills that they need to know. I recommend that the patient sit next to the provider, making sure that mom isn't sitting next to the provider anymore and that the patient now assumes that role next to the provider so that they can be the person answering the questions. If the provider asks a question that they don't know, that they ask the provider to help them give them the information and then practice it at home so that the next time they come for a visit, they will know the answer of what are their medications, what are their allergies, what is their surgical history. Also, the patients should be checking themselves into the appointment, so mom and dad don't need to give their name. The patients can go up directly and give their information, saying, I'm here to see my provider. That way the provider knows that they're starting to be more autonomous in the care. Ideally, we want to encourage patients to start to be autonomous at the earliest age that is developmentally appropriate, and families and parents should be encouraging that. When patients come to a new appointment, physicians expect that they'll know their own medical information, that they know what their problem list is, they know what chronic conditions they have, they know what medications they take when they're sick, they know what medications they need to take every day. Understanding their baseline signs and symptoms is really important when they see a new provider. So if they normally have a high heart rate, they can express that, no, that's my baseline. That's not something that you need to work up, especially when they're seeing a new provider. They should know who their specialists are, and they should know who their physical therapist is. They know what pharmacy they use. They should be aware of their allergies to medicines and their previous medical histories, including their surgeries. 
It's really important that young adults start to carry information with them that will help them access health care should they need it. Families aren't always with our patients and our young adults need to carry their own medical information. That includes an insurance card, a list of their medications and allergies, and a phone number of their providers. When you're transitioning from your pediatric provider to an adult provider, you have to be patient in establishing that relationship. Our patients have had 21 years or so to establish a really good working relationship with their current providers, and they often expect that relationship to be instant when they meet a new adult provider. So be patient with your new adult provider. You're going to be teaching them as much as they're going to be taking care of you often finding that adult provider is a challenge. Probably the best resource is other families who can give you their experience and let you know what providers have been advocates for their patients and their families. Even asking your friends, what adult providers do you use? If you are using multiple specialists, I often get recommendations from that pediatric specialist, what adult provider should I go to? Oftentimes, pediatric patients are seeing multiple specialists, and the specialists actually assume the role as the medical home for the patient. When they transition to the adult side, the patient themselves becomes the captain of that medical home along with their primary care provider on the adult side. I've noticed that there's been a difference between teenagers still being in a pediatric environment and still seeing young kids and toys, and they really want to be in a more age-appropriate environment, so oftentimes they are looking forward to getting into that older setting. It is very hard for me to let her go and let her mature and be independent. And one of the things that, that I struggle with is that I always try to help her. And helping her all the time is making her kind of not be independent the way that it should be. So part of what we have done in the transition program is for me to let her go and for her to start doing it by herself. And it's been wonderful. Um, she's doing good and the support that we have with everybody is yeah. been wonderful. I would say just try to do your best, try hard, never give up don't matter what happened. Here are a few resources for those who would like to dig into the topic of youth health transition a bit further. These are all great websites with information about transition from slightly different perspectives. Feel free to search around and learn more as you like. This overview of healthcare transition serves as an introduction to three other youth health transition trainings. The additional trainings go into greater detail and will provide you with action steps to ensure your child has a successful transition to adult healthcare. Build Your Bridge, Moving from Child to Adult Healthcare is a training aimed to guide families through the transition process. Youth and families are often overwhelmed and underprepared for the transition to adult healthcare this presentation will introduce and discuss eight tools for a successful transition and help families begin to create a transition action plan. If you are not already signed up for this training, contact your regional center and ask about the opportunity to learn more. Dreaming Differently, Planning the Transition to Adult Healthcare is a presentation for families who are raising children with significant intellectual or developmental disabilities and medical complexity. The considerations and process of transition is different for these youth, and this presentation will explore those differences and provide information and resources for this process. If you are not already signed up for this training, feel free to contact your regional center to learn more. And finally, Bridging the Gap. This training is appropriate for a mixed audience of parents and professionals and provides resources and referrals for more information but is not designed to focus on skill building or creating a transition plan for individual youth or families. The training is tailored to the anticipated audience. Previous audiences have included mental health professionals, nurses, and school employees. If you're interested in further information about Bridging the Gap, please contact your regional center to learn more. As mentioned, for more information about these trainings, be sure to contact your regional center. They know when trainings are scheduled near you or will be occurring virtually. 
If you have already registered for an upcoming training, there's no need to contact your regional center for that at this time. Thank you for viewing this introduction to Youth Health Transition. We hope this has been informative and that you will take advantage of further trainings offered on Youth Health Transition.